What's up, everybody? I'm Aslan Hajibani, Director of Digital Media for Warchant.com, the ultimate symbol sports horse. That right there through this wall is Michael Langston. He's on the other side of it. He's right in the same house. Uh, he's a recruiting analyst for Warchant.com, the ultimate symbol sports source. Hit the thumbs up now or maybe later on the video when you think that we've earned it. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and download the app. Bottom of your screen there. Download the app. Put it on your phone or whatever. Uh, but the thumbs up, though, is the big thing that you want, right, Michael? So you, you live for the thumbs up. I live for the thumbs up. Uh, this is a big a big weekend, guys. So certainly uh, hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to download the War Chant app on Apple and Android. That's a big deal. Uh, certainly something that you want to do. Um, certainly a lot to cover uh, this week. Great, great weekend, by the way, Aslan. I mean, the way they set this thing up, phenomenal. Uh, fun times, but also a hard competition. So let's get at it. All right, and also don't forget Midnight Madness going down Monday at midnight. So like Sunday, 11.59 p.m., and then it becomes midnight. Midnight Madness going down. War Chant TV. Tune in. Going to be wild. Why else would we be up at midnight, everybody? Let's get to it, though, Michael. You had a really, really busy weekend along with Austin Cox. Uh, a commitment dropped on Saturday. A guy lit, released a top seven. Florida State wasn't even on it. You weren't even worried. Though. Michael's like, I got this, man. Uh, what did Florida State get on uh, this weekend with C.J. Hurd committed to the full for 2024, obviously? Yeah, a great uh, you know safety prospect and CJ Hurd. Uh, for those that didn't see, I mean, he's got a he's got a really cool picture with him and Dalvin uh, on his Twitter. Uh, you know where he was a little kid. Um, so this kid was a diehard. This wasn't like a a kid that says uh, dream school and then commits to Tennessee or something. I mean, this kid loved FSU and as long as FSU coveted him, uh, he was going to be there. Hard hitter, fast instincts are phenomenal going to add a lot to that secondary 2024 class it was just it was just a really good boost to kind of get the weekend started it was funny just watching it because you know cj didn't want, want anybody to know that he was visiting so we kind of kept it quiet and then obviously he committed then told norvell and norvell was really excited so we kind of saw that live so that was pretty cool and then uh got kind of got the ball rolling i mean great 2024 class when you look through the through the whole class oh my gosh it's a it's a phenomenal start for FSU in that 2024 class, but really a, a, a very dominating, instinctful uh, uh, safety that's going to add a lot uh, to that secondary. And we've already seen FSU's doing well in the secondary when you watch them, uh, you know, in practice and stuff. So I think this just adds more to it with CJ, and I think he's going to bring a lot to that, uh, you know, that safety position. All right, well, let's focus then on the more uh, pressing needs. That is the here and now playmakers, five stars. We want them. There was a couple on campus. Uh, crazy enough, right? Crazy enough. Five-star receiver. Who wants a receiver? FSU does. That's who. Uh, they need one. Uh, bad. So, uh, yeah, Hakeem, uh, to me, is the big name to, to know. Really engaged throughout the weekend. You could tell just really just connecting with, with a lot of the staff, the players. Spent a lot of time with the players. Just uh, was very involved in everything they did. Um, even the water balloon fight, he had the – dodge a few things but he was he's very active and just every activity they did and you know we obviously talked to you know Hakeem afterwards or really just kind of won the press like hey you know how serious are you about FSU he's like yeah they're in my top they're 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 a team I'm I'm very high on told us some things that were unique about FSU which kind of showed the separation of of what makes FSU special compared to other schools and gave us some interesting feedback on you know, he watching it because he went to a few practices and he said, you know what? The one thing I noticed about these guys, they're going to throw the ball a lot. You know, they throw the ball a lot and he likes how fast everything moves and just the way they find a way to get playmakers the ball. And uh, that was interesting to me because when you think about FSU with this team and what Norvell's done so far, you think run, uh, running the ball because they ran the ball so well. But um, he said uh, the thing he knows is they're going to throw the ball a lot. And that certainly is something that you know, grabbed his attention. He also likes the fact that Norvell is kind of different from a lot of other coaches where he's much more active with everything that goes on within the practice or just, you know, even when the recruit visits on there, he's very, he's very involved in every, every activity they do. So I think that really jumped out to Hakeem. Jalen Brown was also there. He, I don't think he left till Sunday. Um, certainly he, he visits, committed to LSU, but FSU has always been a team that's kind of been in his heart or been a team that's really <clears throat> got a soft spot in there. Obviously he's the teammate of, you know, Lamont Green Jr. Who's already committed to FSU. He likes FSU. He really likes Dugans a lot. I think the key for him, for me, and I put this in my breakdown last night is, you know, what FSU does during the season. I think it's more impactful 
for a guy like Jalen than probably even more so than than a guy like Hakeem. I think with Hakeem, you can you can have a positive season. You can win like seven or eight games. I think that's going to you know do the trick for him. But I think with Jalen, you probably have to push that thing to nine. And certainly uh, the LSU game, he's going to be there. So don't get much bigger than that when uh, you know, one, of your, one of your main targets is going to be at the game in New Orleans. So I think you win that game. That's going to raise the eyebrows, and that will certainly raise the eyebrows. And I think, for me, the goal for FSU with Jalen Brown is get him to officially visit FSU. If he can he can officially visit FSU and you start showing product on the field, then you got something to work with. So that's kind of where I think things stand with Jalen. I feel that Hakeem's more a realistic target, at least at this point. But, uh, you know, that could change if, uh, you know, the product on the field balloons up. All right, we'll take it for now, though, right, man? We're It's July, last day we're going into August, and, uh, I mean, just being on campus, that's a good sign. I mean, again, they, can't, they, they, go ahead. You, you can't get them if they're not here. So <laughs> you got to get them on campus. He was there for three days. That's that's certainly an impressive thing. And and certainly uh, he wasn't in gay, as, as excited, you know, like the way I saw Hakeem. But that's kind of also Jalen's kind of a laid-back kid, too, so you can't take too much into that. But – I think with Jalen, it for me, it's simple is is the product on the field, and if you show that, I think that's going to grab his attention. Okay. All right. Well, they probably also want to know who's going to be throwing them the football um, mm. because they're working on that sort of stuff. We want to talk about twenty twenty three, but let's go to twenty twenty four. Our guy, uh, Luke Cromanhawk, uh, out in Savannah, Georgia, on campus, huh? Made made, yeah. made another visit down here. What was that about? Yeah. Yeah. I loved. Uh, I think it was more just. Hey, hey, I'm Luke, and I want to I want to show you what I got. I want to show coaches what I got, and 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 there was some elite prospects there that that you're going against, and and Luke was very good, uh, very strong. <laughs> you kind of hope, you kind of wish, like, hey, Luke, can you reclassify to go to 2023? But I think uh, I think certainly they have a gym there, and Luke showed a lot of of great ball location. Uh, certainly, there's plenty of velocity on his throws. He didn't seem to struggle with the middle range throws, and. And certainly, um, he seemed to draw a lot of praise from Tony Tokarts, quarterback coach. And then Norvell was certainly watching him closely. The main thing I noticed with him, others kind of, you know, more so struggled with kind of getting a feel for different type of receivers. But Luke kind of settled in quicker than a lot of guys. And I, I thought Luke was sharp. Uh, we saw him at the league camp, I think, in June. And uh, um, I think both of me and you and Aslan were, were impressed when we watched him. I, I felt like he was one of the, the best quarterback there, and then I think yeah. um, I think I think yesterday he was solid again. Um, now those other quarterbacks there, but I just I like his presence in the pocket. I like uh, his mechanics. I'll, I'll, you could tighten up a few things, but <laughs> I think overall, I think Luke had a great day, and and the future is pretty bright when you watch some of the throws that he can make. I mean, the way he can lay it in there, and the ball location, and velocity. And, and what he sees on the field when, when you go to like one-on-one situation or seven-on-seven seven and making decisions, I think he showed that he's certainly capable of doing that. So sounds like FSU got a good one. I got a little nervous on his tape. I'm like, why am I seeing a kickoff? He's out there as like a gunner. I mean, like he's, he's part of the wedge, like busting stuff up. And uh, also you see him making a tackle there off the edge as a linebacker. That's crazy, man. Uh, yeah. Saturday showcase, that's what you're talking about. Standouts like a guy like Luke uh, Cromanhawk. Uh, what about uh, – a backfield mate possibly uh, that's already committed elsewhere. I mean, could we see a guy like maybe Michael Mitchell uh, find his way to Florida State? What uh, sort of ground do you think they made up for this past weekend? Yeah, I, I spent the most time with running backs. Austin did, I mean, a lot of the other positions. Michael Mitchell, for those that don't know, this kid's, like, favorite school is Florida State. The kid told me, as on he's got bed sheets right currently on his bed that are Florida State. So he loves Florida State. And I think they really like this kid. I, I, I talked with some FSU contacts before and after, and I think the main thing is if FSU offers, I think it's very likely he becomes a Seminole. Might not be right away, but I think he'll set an official. Everything goes smooth with that, you know, which usually does. You know, Most officials are good. and I, I think he's a guy that I, I see flipping the FSU. I don't know if he'll flip like right away if FSU offers, but I think an offer is, is certainly quite possible in this one. Based on the intel I got back from you know the FSU side of things, that uh, this is a guy that they they seem to covet. Runs with a lot of powers. You see a lot in these films. What I saw yesterday when I watched him was I was impressed the most. Just 
his footwork, uh, his feet are so quick, uh, you know, very choppy as far as between the tackles, uh, showed a lot of quickness, and he's fluid when he runs routes. I think the thing that Coach Johnson worked the most on with him was just tracking the ball a little better, run your routes, but track the ball, find it better, and and certainly he did a much better job with that one compared to the previous camp in June, but I think he's a the guy they could pull. Anybody stand out to you uh, wide receiver-wise? I think uh, most of the uh, the elite guys didn't work out. So I would say if there was one guy be Camden Fryer, man, I love this kid. I love them at the elite camp. I love them. Uh, loved them yesterday. I would say this like I've said before. This kid has really good ball control. I said that he was the best receiver to me, even when Vondravius Jacobs was there and, and others. I just felt like the body control this kid has when uh, coming out of the routes, that seems easy, but – you watch Camden, uh, you know, and you watch other receivers. He makes it look so easy as far as he's always in position to shield himself, to be in position to make a play on the ball, great hands, and then just like his daddy, he can fly. Um, so uh, he can he can certainly go after the catch. He's no longer at, at Swanee. He's now at La- uh, Lake City. So he transferred there to Lake City. But um, he is a big weapon for FSU, and um, the way he positions himself and body control in these routes is – is extremely impressive to me. Very good baseball player as well. Plays plays plenty of places on on the field for um, Sawadee, as you saw here, blocking downfield. He 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 loves to play <laughs> different slot positions, different you know pump returners, kick returners, and this guy just does a little bit of everything. I think this is a, a really elite pickup for FSU for the 2024 class. I highlight these guys in the 2024 class. How much I like this class. You know, he's just one of those examples of, of why I like it so much. He's just a great player. So did he go from having uh, Kyler Hall as his head coach to Brian Allen? I think Brian's not there anymore. So oh, I think okay. Brian Brian's retired or, or whatnot. Um, but um, I don't know the reason why he went to Lake City. But uh, went over there to Lake City, and um, he's going to tear it up there. I mean, this kid can play. Uh, he can definitely play at FSU. He's a guy that's going to, I think, seal the field early and, just one of the many uh, guys in this 2024 class I love. All right. Elsewhere here on our YouTube account, uh, War Chant TV, uh, Michael, you were able to catch up on Sunday morning with uh, a pair of offensive linemen, big human beings, Rod Kearney, Lucas Simmons. What was your sort of takeaway from talking to them? It was just, I mean, it told you a lot about not just Atkins and how good he is a recruiter, but just the culture that they've, they've already built there at FSU of, of the family. And two, they're getting elite players. You know, Roderick is very elite. Um, Lucas is very elite. I my my alpha uh, my top performer was Lucas. I uh, from everybody, I just felt like there's not many guys that have the range and length that this guy does. He is just long, just so long, uh, and it's really hard to get around him because his his lower base is really good. He keeps his, he keeps you in front of him. He's really patient too with his hands. Even Keldrick Falk was telling me like, man. I got to go against him a different way. I think Lucas went against them, won two reps. Uh, we showed the clip on on War Chan, uh, or on our Twitter. Um, just he is really difficult. You got to really tack him right at him instead of going to the outside. So it's just there's different ways you have to go after this guy. I think Simmons is going to be a top 100 guy. I've said that for from the beginning, and it seems like he gets better every time I see him when I see him work and. Uh, I think both of those guys recruiting hard out there. You could really sense it. And it's a funny video for people that when we put it up, I mean, people are going to people are enjoy it. Uh, it just kind of tells you about why they picked FSU relationships uh, with, with Atkins, Norvell, and then kind of some guys that they're recruiting. Oh boy, it's got it's loud. Oh man, well, I got the audio on there, Twitter. Chill out, man. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, speaking of Keldrick Falk, uh, what, did, what did you see from him? Uh, he's a commitment, obviously. People are always interested to see how he's doing. Yeah, he was very good. Um, as you see on that clip, uh, Lucas kind of got the, the best of him as far as, like I said, if you go with Lucas, you got to go right into him. Um, so that's where you kind of got to beat him. But um, I thought Keldrick did really good. The, the only one that kind of gave him trouble was Lucas. Besides that, most of the day, Keldrick was you know, one of the best uh, defensive ends out there. Another defensive end I like was LJ McCray. He's from Seabree, Daytona Beach Seabreeze, Daytona Beach Seabreeze, and um, he's, he's, he's only 20-24. Both of those guys I thought were really good, the best guys. But Keldrick, 
certainly uh, you know looked like a top 100 guy. Uh, I think I think he didn't hurt himself any of the, what I saw. The main thing with him is the power and and the and the quickness how he gets off the line. So I think good day for Kelter. All right, Michael. So all that said, man, it's always a good time. It's always a good weekend. Everybody's happy. Everybody loves sports. They they want to wait till to see what happens on the field. All that. <laughs> Uh, what happens here in the next few weeks, you think, before the season starts? I mean, did anything come from this weekend, you think, to where something could happen here imminently in the next few weeks? Or is it always going to really come down to how this team looks in these few opening weeks of the season that then then maybe we'll start seeing some sort of return on all this goodwill that we hear about? Well, I think they'll have a, a few decisions coming up. I think linebacker Blake Nicholson, we got a story coming up on him. Very positive. Uh, certainly, uh, he stayed at FSU for three days actually went to Panama city for a fourth day just nice. to see what it's like about the beach. And, um, he really, um, he really highlighted the people at FSU. And then he said, then I asked him kind of what's the factors with your recruitment. He said the people. So, um, you know, that's a big deal and a, certainly a positive plus. And he said, Norvell, like a lot of recruits have said, that's different that he likes how involved he is on, on everything you do. He said, most of the time you see the coach maybe once or twice on the visit, but with Norvell, you see him all the time. He's very involved and that. That's something that's big on him. He's big on relationships. So I think it's FSU, Oregon, but uh, my forecast is on FSU. I still think, I think FSU is, is sitting in a, a good spot. Well, he said he's going to take a couple of days then he's going to set the uh, date. So he's got one coming up and then there's a few more, I think, we're going to kind of, I'm going to kind of monitor in the, in the month of August. I think for the most part though, as I'm probably like four or five, but I think for the most part, a lot of these guys are going to kind of wait to see what, what the product is during the season. Obviously FSU kicks it off with Duquesne on August 27th. So I expect to see, you know, several recruits there for that game. I think Roger Kearney already told me he's going. So, um, so that should be, should be fun, but I think I think there's some decisions coming up, and I'll cover them as we get closer. But you know, Blake's certainly one that I'm I'm keeping the most eye on right now. Want to hang out later around midnight, man? You got it. I'll be there. All right, midnight Max or Chan TV. Uh, join us; it'll be worth it. He's Michael. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, hit the thumbs up. We earned it. Uh, Seventeen minutes of free information. Who loves you, Michael Langston? Does have a great one, everybody.